Well, hello, everybody. This is Dr. Sam. How's it going? Let me go uh, video here and scare you for a few minutes. How's everybody doing? Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, today, we're going to get into horizontal and financial, actually, horizontal and vertical analysis on financial statements. And, and I thought I would kind of focus on how to do horizontal and vertical on balance sheets and then a vertical analysis on a on an income statement all right so I hope you can see my my screen here it says it's sharing so let's go ahead and talk about this this is part of financial analysis uh, a lot of people do ratios as we saw in chapter 17 we're doing uh, chapter 17 a again depends on what book you're using but um, for this particular course, it's in Chapter 17A, and they get into this uh, another way of analyzing material. So instead of doing like typical ratios, uh, for example, like an inventory turnover or a current asset current ratio uh, ratio, uh, so many different ratios as we saw in Chapter 17. This is another way to kind of analyze the information that you have here. So the first thing that I want to do is kind of explain what you're doing in horizontal and in horizontal analysis just as the name implies you're looking at material that's going across so you're looking at uh, 2021 versus 2020 information and you may have done this in one of your math classes who knows how long ago or how recent but if you've ever calculated your percent change how much something goes up percentage wise how much something goes down percentage wise it's the same thing that's horizontal analysis so it's actually quite simple so basically what you're going to do is you're going to take the difference between your two answers and then uh, or your two years find out that difference and then divide by the base year so basically to do horizontal you are going to take the change between the two years and you're going to divide it by the base year amount so if you've seen percent change in math same thing so if we go through and say okay my balance sheet in terms of my cash was forty four thousand now it's eighty seven five my change is forty three five and then what I want to do with that 43.5 is now divide it by the 44,000. Okay, so you're going to take your, your change in your answers divided by the base. So if I do that, here's my change, and I divide it by the older of the two years amount, you will end up with this result. And let's turn this into percentages. So we have a 99% increase in cash. It's that simple. So I don't know if this will let me do this all the way down. Let's see if it does. So we had in accounts received. And by the way, this is going to be a quick video for a change. So don't be shocked when it's like done before you know. Like, whoa, I thought your videos are like super long. But this one's going to be nice and short because the information, I think, is pretty easy to follow. So look at the difference, 65 versus 51, a change of 14,000. In inventory, our inventory went down. So you can see the negative values there. Same thing with your equipment. And let's see here. We had a change in accumulated depreciation, which is an $18,000 change. And we can even do it for the grand total. I can do the same thing for my liabilities. So you can see our liabilities went from 30000 in 2020 down to 25,000 in 2021. And let me just push that all the way down. Okay. Percentage wise, again, you're going to take whatever your change was and divide it by the older of the two years. And we can do that. So once you do it once, if you're using Excel, oh my God, you can see it's super simple. Okay, 
So that's how you do horizontal analysis. So you can just look at each individual account and see how it changed from last year to this year or whatever two time frames you're, you're looking at. So we had a 27% increase in accounts receivables. So you're extending more credit to your customers. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Who knows? If you're dealing with bad debts, it could be a bad thing. But at the same time, you know, more customers are probably, you know, buying from you. They just need extra time to pay you. Our inventory has gone down, which could mean that we're selling more stuff. There's your prepaid assets like prepaid rent, prepaid insurance. Uh, looks like we bought some more equipment. Uh, if you look at our debt, we went from 30000 down to 25000 People love having less debt, right? Uh, look at our wages payable. That went down. Income tax payable went down. We're paying less income tax. That could mean less sales, though. You never know. But it could also mean we're doing a different technique or maybe we're, uh, we've improved our, our expenses, you know, so we've keep, kept them down. So that's what's caused our taxes to be lower. You can see we got rid of a long-term note. We had $60,000 worth of debt, brought that down to thirty. Looks like we issued more stock, and it looks like we did have a profit because notice our retain earnings went from 24.1 to uh, 33.3. So that's how you do ver uh, excuse me how you do horizontal analysis. You're comparing one year to the next. When it comes to horizontal uh, vertical analysis, I don't know why I'm getting my my words all jumbled here. <clears throat> So now when we go to do vertical, it's a totally different analysis. So with vertical, you're comparing everything in the balance sheet to total assets, or if you want total liabilities and owner's equity, it's the same number. So basically to do this one, you're going to take, let's say, cash in 2021, and you're going to divide it by your total assets in 2021. And we need to get all this in percentage language as well. So cash made up 28% of total assets. That's what that's saying. If you look at your accounts receivable, divide that by your total assets, you come up with 20%. So accounts receivable makes up 20% of your total assets. So vertical analysis, you are taking each item and dividing it by the total. If you can do it for one, you can do it for all. And of course, if you did that with the total, it should always be 100%, because whenever you divide something by itself, you get one or 100%. So we look at it from 2020's perspective. In 2020, our cash was about uh, 50%. That doesn't make any sense, does it? 44, hold on a second. So 44,000 divided by 292. There we go. So in 2020, our cash was 15% of our total assets. But in 2021, our cash was 28% of our total assets. So again, you could read into that negatively and positively, but you can see that uh, now our cash makes up more of our assets. It's not good to have too much cash on hand. You, you should be investing that and hopefully turning your money into more money. But if we do this all the way down the list, see that our accounts receivable was 17% of total assets this year it's 20% if we take our 86.5 of inventory and divide that by total assets that's 30% okay, if we look at let's see if I can steal this and make it nope I was hoping I could do a little quick shortcut there 5400 divided by the 292.2 Got the 115 divided by the 292.2, and then you got the 9,000, the negative 9,000 divided by the 292.2. Okay, and then of course you can do the same thing down in this section. 
<clears throat> again, you're taking your individual amount and you're dividing it by the total of that year. And this is vertical analysis. Look at our common stock here, 220 of that 317. So as you can see, that does make up the bulk of the total. And then when you get down to the bottom, 317.7 divided by itself. Oops. Do that again. 317.7 divided by itself. There we go. So notice either 1 or 100%, same idea, but if all our answers are in percentages, we'll keep that as is. So let's just check this one, 30,000 divided by 292, 10%. So it looks like if I just extend these guys out, I can take a shortcut this way. And I have my answers. Okay, so you've now seen horizontal and vertical analysis. Let's now do vertical analysis on the income statement. So now when you're looking at the income statement, what's your denominator? So when you're dealing with the balance sheet, the denominator was total assets and total or total liabilities and equity because it's the same number. What do you think we would use for the income statement? And the actual answer is sales. So we're going to divide everything by sales. So sales is the major number. <clears throat> so if we take 678 divided by 678. There's your 100%. And we're going to do that for all of them. Take every single number that you see and divide it by the sales. And almost done here. This, whoops, 58.6 divided by 6.78. Let's put this information in percentages as well. 125.6 divided by the 6.78. 141.4 divided by the 6.78. And you just do that all the way down the page. And two more, and we are done. So I would have to say, of all the things I've probably ever shared with you or done with you, I'd have to say this is probably the easiest. I don't know. It is for me. But take a look at this. 100% minus 61% gives you 39%. Makes sense, right? And then these two get added together. You get 19%. Subtract that 19 from uh, the 39. I think this is rounded to 21. This is actually a lot higher. So if we were to like increase this a little bit, see what I'm talking about. Same same thing with this. So you would you could actually see the the breakdown if you go out to at least two two decimal places. Okay, so but if you did the math, you it would actually check out with uh, with your numbers. So the percentages uh, match with the dollar amounts. And I'm just trying to make some of them red here. 
and we'll double underline that one. So that's it. So you've now seen vertical analysis with an income statement and also with a balance sheet. And then with the balance sheet, I was able to show you horizontal analysis. You can do horizontal with anything. You could even take, let's say, uh, your paycheck. Let's say you make uh, your annual salary. Let's say you made $50,000 at the beginning of the year. <clears throat> and at the end of the year, you made, let's say, $53,000. So if someone were to say to you, so how much of a raise did you get? What was your percent raise? Well, take the difference, take your change, right, which is $3,000, and divide it by your, your base. Your base is the older of the two numbers, right? So we'll put base over here. So percent change or percent increase in pay. Well, let's see what it is. Change divided by $50,000. Wow, you got a 6% raise. So that's how you would do that. So it doesn't have to be accounting information. It could be on anything. All right, as long as you got two numbers, you can figure out the percent increase or the percent decrease. That's it. So I told you this would be quick, hopefully painless. And uh, I hope you enjoyed all the videos I've made. All right, you guys take it easy and uh, have a good one. Uh, if you're watching this, we're close to Christmas, so Merry Christmas. You probably had a great Thanksgiving. And, you know, if I'm, hopefully this pandemic year will be over with and we can get back to normalcy, right? That would be great. Anyway, so you guys have a good one. If you're watching this for a future semester, then ignore those last comments, and hopefully you're having a good semester, whatever year this happens to be. All right, you guys, take it easy. Peace out. And it was wonderful working with you guys. I'll, I'll probably upload more videos for different topics as we go along, but, uh, you know, for future purposes. So feel free to, you know, keep subscribing, and or if you haven't, please do. And... Uh, You'll, you'll hear from me down the road. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.